Welcome in our NBA draft guru, Mike Schmitz. I assume that's what it says on your business cards. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> you recently spent some time up in Walnut Creek, California, where the G League Ignite team is practicing. They're composed of NBA draft prospects who, I don't want to say skip school, they opted not to go to college. Instead, they're holding training camp in a bubble there, preparing for the G League season. What's your biggest takeaway being with these guys? My biggest takeaway was that they have two potential top five picks mm. who have been developing kind of off the radar, you know, 30 minutes away from San Francisco in Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga. And they have four potential draft picks in total when you talk about Isaiah Todd and Dacian Nix. And they've really been impacted by this pandemic more than anybody because the G League season obviously put on pause and they've been developing out there since late August. So we're talking about five months for these guys. And and early on, it was just kind of one-on-one -on -one workouts. There wasn't that much that they could do. But over these past few months, they've really been building toward this G League bubble. They've added veterans. When you talk <laughs> about Jarrett Jack, 37-year-old veteran who's played so many big NBA games, Amir Johnson. Um, they've, they've added a ton of guys. Bobby Brown, who's played all over the world. So I was able to see kind of their daily routine and what's that, what that's like. And it's 8 a.m. COVID testing every single day. And then it's really an NBA environment from there. You're talking about individual skill workout, you're getting your lift in, and then you have your team practice going through concepts offensively, defensively. How are we guarding pick and roll, learning NBA actions? So they're really gearing up for this bubble and it's, it's not gonna be easy for them. Uh, they're gonna play 15 to 20 games out in Orlando. They're leaving on Sunday, and this is a great chance for NBA scouts, executives to really get their first look at them, but they're going to be playing against guys who have played in the NBA, who are hungry, who want to prove that the G League is not high school basketball, and it's not about just coming in with your five-star ranking. So we're going to learn a lot more about these prospects in the next few weeks here, but I was impressed with what they've been doing down in Walnut Creek. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Paul Pierce here. <clears throat> I had an opportunity to be around Jaden Green when he was a high school player. He played on my AU team for a couple tournaments. I wanted to just get an update on how's he doing. And also, how does this, you know, change the landscape from, you know, top high school prospects, you know, for going college and going to the G, straight to the G League? Yeah, Jalen looked really good. You know, I've called him the most exciting prospect in this draft. We Ooh. still have him at number three. I'm not sure he's the top prospect in this draft, but just from a level of athleticism that no one else has, he's kind of an entertainer on the floor. He loves the bright lights. And I think of Zach Levine when I look at him athletically, a guy who just has absolute springs. You know, one NBA scout described him as having million dollar legs with just that type of athleticism. He shoots <laughs> it easy. He can score it from all three levels. Uh, so for him, it's about improving defensively. I think he really wants to show that he can be a two-way player. And the vets actually had a, a play they would call uh, called baby. And, and they would basically just put him in the mid post and attack him, attack him, attack him. And he held his own. And, and he's going to be a guy who's going to be tested in the bubble as well. But, you know, in terms of the landscape of college basketball, I mean, this is a different venture you know you're still going to have your guys like Steph Curry Paul George Kawhi CJ McCollum Damian Lillard yeah. who kind of need <clears throat> that timeline to go do it at the collegiate level uh, but when you're talking about your top guys like a Jalen Green like a Jonathan Kaminga who's really impressive in his own right mm -hmm. kind of like a Jalen Brown type of prospect you know this is intriguing for them just because they're able to be coached by Brian Shaw who has so much experience they're around those vets that we talked about they're shooting with an NBA ball from from the NBA three-point line they're learning how to ice ball screens in the sideline and like they're really learning how to play NBA basketball now unfortunately for them they haven't had the opportunity to play a game yet and, and you guys know you learn so much uh, from those battles yeah. whether it's at Kansas or, or UCLA uh, having to take no possessions off and play against your peers so I'm really curious to see how this is all gonna come together but like I said we're gonna learn a lot more about these prospects once we see them in the bubble well, you said Zach Mike, Levine, doing, but when Matt? I first saw Jalen oh, Green, uh, one second, Matt. but when I first saw Jalen Green, my first thought was Tracy McGrady. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think wow. he's still developing kind of the, those point guard skills, <laughs> right? And, and But I told him, I think he has a chance to be a guy who can play on the ball in the future, you know, like we've seen from Zach, mm -hmm. who's developed as a playmaker, uh, even like a Bradley Beal type, you know, a guy who can score it at all three levels and has improved as a facilitator as well. So, yeah, I mean, he's a big-time talent, and I think people are going to be really impressed just with how effortlessly he scores the ball. It's good to hear. Mike, how you doing? How you doing, Matt Barnes? So who are your top five right now, um, <clears throat> although early, heading into this draft? Yeah, so number one is Cade Cunningham. He's been the number one prospect for us all year. A six foot eight, seven two wingspan, 220 pounds. Really exactly what every team is looking for in today's NBA. You look at all these six eight wings who can create offense from all over the floor, and he really has that. You know, he makes everyone around him better. But this is an incredibly strong top five, okay? So all these guys could potentially contend for number one. You have Cade at Oklahoma State, and then you have Evan Mobley, who shows you a little bit of glimpses of a young Anthony Davis just with his his defense his versatility uh, his skill level offensively Jalen Green like I talked about uh, Jalen Suggs who's a tough-minded guard he's like the best Suggs. player on the best mm -hmm. team in America at Gonzaga yeah it reminds me a little bit of like a Drew Holiday type just with his toughness mm -hmm. and how he impacts winning uh, and then Jonathan Kaminga like I said 6'8 uh, long arms, defends multiple positions, can make an open shot. You know, he's been neck and neck with Jalen out there on a day-to-day -day basis in scrimmages, uh, in practice settings. So I think he's going to open some eyes as well out in Orlando. Well, thank you so much. All really right, appreciate though. it, Mike. I know that Paul Pierce is going to keep an eye on his former protege there. <laughs> so we'll be checking in with you as we go here toward the draft. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.